Hello, Eternal Life fans. So, um, my roommate, he, uh, has triggered me once again. And he was kind of judging me, and he, he wanted to, he brought Christopher Hitchens. He brought a Christopher Hitchens quote into his video. Really a video of Christopher Hitchens, kind of, uh, to make a point against me, to judge me. Because I'm a believer in God, and Christopher Hitchens, he had these like five points of these are like the driving factors of why Christopher Hitchens thinks people believe in God. Out of nothing but wish thinking and nonsense and fear and ignorance, and above all, and I'm not quitting on this point, servility. So my roommate was using this as a catalyst, a catalyst. To try, try to judge me with, with using the wisdom of a uh, Hitchin. So, let's go through. So let's go through some of these points. Um, all right. So you guys know that um, I talk about the hypothetical God. Okay. I in my mind, I always put hypothetical in front of God because God is hypothetical. Like no one knows if there's a God or not. So that's why I love the term hypothetical God. But hypothetically, if there is a God then servility makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It would make sense to be, uh, you know, to s whatever, serve the hypothetical God, because in doing so, you would increase your chance of living forever. So, but, but Hitchens, he talks about servility by, because he, he always talks about like this um, celestial North Korea idea. So he thinks that people want to be, um, they want to be a serf, they want to be like this little slave to this God and they, they have this like slave mindset where they want to be uh, basically essentially ruled. They want to be judged and ruled by this, um, you know, God. It is the wish to be a slave. It is the desire that there be an unalterable, unchallengeable, tyrannical authority who can convict you of thought crime while you are asleep. Who can, can, who can subject you, who must indeed subject you, to a total surveillance around the clock, every waking and sleeping minute of your life, I say of your life, before you're born, and even worse, and where the real fun begins, after you're dead. <laughs> a celestial North Korea. <laughs> who wants this to be true? Who but a slave desires such a ghastly fate. Um, so he thinks there's a desire for pe that people have this desire to be a serf and to be this um, like little servile slave. And, and here's the, here's the reason for that that I think I I want to be a I want to be a a slave I guess you could say a servile slave a serf because if I'm a servile serf to a god. First of all, that means there is a God, and that's good. So it's more, it's not, it's not more, uh, it's not that I want to be judged by a God, really. It's that I want, it's that I'm willing to be judged by a God. And I'm, I would be, uh, I, I guess I would, it's really saying that I prefer there to be a God than to know God. So I, I'd be willing to sacrifice freedom. You know, I'd be willing to sacrifice, uh, you know, and be judged and all this stuff because, you know, for the for the sake of there being a God, that would be preferable. Even if it if it, even if it meant I had to be judged, so it's not that I want to be judged; it's that I'd be willing to be judged. That's a better way of saying it. So, do I want to be a serf? Do I want to be a slave to this God? Uh, yeah, I guess if. if well, if there is a God, of course, it makes sense to be. It would make sense to be a slave. It makes sense to just obey all the rules and just whatever, bow down to the God and do whatever you needed to, uh, in order to be judged right, like be judged uh, righteous or whatever. You'd want to just obey all the rules. You'd want to just be a little uh, serf, I guess you could say, or whatever. You know that that just that, that that's putting it in negative context. The way I, you know, that's a negative connotation, the word serf or slave, really. The, the better way of saying it would be just an obedient, um, obedient person. 
that's all. It's, it would be, so it's really about the servility aspect is like, yeah, of course, if there is a God, of course, you, it makes sense to be servile. Um, and, and secondly, it's not necessarily that we want to be a slave. It's just that we'd be willing to sacrifice any, any freedom. You know, it's basically saying we'd prefer to live in a God, a world where there's a God, right? Even if it's a tyrannical God, we prefer that tyrannical God rather than no God, because if there's a God at all, it's easier to live forever in a, in a world where there's a God. Okay, it's just easier to live forever in that type of universe because then you, it, you, it wouldn't be so bad as long as you're obeying the rules. As long as you're being obedient and you're obeying the rules, there's no problem that there's a God. It's only a problem if you're being disobedient and you're breaking the rules. Okay? Because he broke the rules. What rules? It's assuming that the, assuming that the rules are reasonable and they're not like too harsh or whatever, then it's not such a bad thing to just be obedient and just be a little slave to the God, you know? Be my friend. So, so just to clarify this, it's not that I want to be a little servile slave that gets judged by God. Okay, it's that more. It's it's that I'd be willing to be a servile slave that judge that gets judged by God, because uh, like if I had to choose the different options, right? If I could choose that there to be a God or not to be a God, of course I would obviously choose there to be a God, even if that meant that I'd have to be a servile slave under a dictatorship in a, a celestial North Korea. I would choose that option because obviously it's easier to live forever in that type of universe, assuming that the God has some basic level of morality, because then all you have to do is obey the rules and be a moral good person, and then there you go. Then you get uh, rewarded and you get eternal life and all this stuff. It's easier to live forever in that universe. So of course that's preferable to the universe where there's no God, even if that means that the universe where there is no God, you have more freedom. Yeah, you get to have more freedom before you die and then cease to exist. I mean, and then, or, or you're having to work, you're having to do everything to save yourself in that universe and uh, you don't get any help, you don't get the aid from a God. That's harder to live forever, you know? It's nice, to, it's nice. Uh, to, it was definitely preferable to have a God to give you, grant you protection and, and all this uh, helping you live forever. Of course that's preferable. So of course I want to be, I want there to be a God, even if that means I have to be judged and everything. Because that's a, that's a worthwhile sacrifice. To sacrifice freedom, you know, to sacrifice hedonism, to sacrifice doing anything I wanted to, the, that's, the, yeah, that's a, that's a worthwhile sacrifice. Okay? Um, it just makes sense. Well, obviously... Alright, so that pretty much covers the servility aspect of it. Let's talk about the ignorance aspect. So Hitchens is claiming that this is somehow, it is somehow ignorant to believe in a god. And ignorance. Well, all I can say is that's just his opinion now, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. You know, he calls it ignorance, but what if it turns out there was a God? He doesn't know after all, so if it turns out there is a God, he would kind of be have to, he would have to eat his words now, wouldn't it? You couldn't call it ignorant if there was actually a God. So, and nobody knows at the end of the day if there is or isn't a God. Even Hitchens himself is agnostic. So, he's leaving room for some possibility that there's a God. You know, he's an agnostic atheist. So he leaves some room for the possibility of a god. So if it's somewhat possible, it can't be that ignorant. If he's even leaving room for some possibility of it being true, so he almost it's almost self-refuting to call it ignorant to believe there's a god because even he even thinks it's a possible chance that there's a god. All right, and then he talks about fear, fear being an aspect to why people believe in God and the whole, you know, religious mindset. And yeah, agreed. Much agreed that fear has a lot to do with it. Well, in two ways. First of all, there's 
if you do believe in God, or it makes sense to fear, it makes sense to fear God, because if there is a God, then God would have all this power over you, and God would maybe determine something, like if you get to live forever or not. So fearing God in that respect makes just a lot of sense, in the same way it makes sense to be servile to God. And then secondly, you know, he, he's, he's really hinting at the idea that people are believing in God because of their fearing death. And sure, yeah, yeah, of course. So, so like, just believing in God, it is a coping mechanism in that way. It, it helps, it can help alleviate the fear of death. To think there's this, there might be this God that's protecting you and maybe, you know, helping you live forever and things like that. Um, okay, but, but just the fact that fear gets people, it can can lead people to believe in God, that doesn't, you know, because it's a comforting thought, okay, it doesn't mean that it's not true. So, 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 I don't get why, I mean, fear, it's not such a big deal that fear will lead people to believe in God. It doesn't really have any bearing on whether or not God is real or not, you know, and as far as fearing the hypothetical God, that's just smart, because the hypothetical God is hypothetically possible and hypothetically true. Therefore, it makes sense to fear the possibility of God, regardless of what you believe. And Hitchens clearly is not the greatest philosopher, because when has he talked about the po you know fearing the hypothetical God? That's obviously a smart thing to do. Well, Hitchens. You know, he, he probably obviously didn't didn't care about living forever that much. Because if you really truly cared about living forever, you would incorporate fear of the hypothetical God into your whole life philosophy. You know, you would act as though there were a God. Just in case. Better safe than sorry. It's like my mama always said, better safe than, than sorry. All right, that covers fear. All right, now let's talk about nonsense. And nonsense. Nonsense. Well, I think, I think if I recall, Willy Wonka would have something to say about nonsense. It's a lot of nonsense. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest man. And lastly, wishful thinking. As Hitchens, as Hitchens says, wish thinking. Out of nothing but wish thinking. So d does wish thinking have something to do with why people believe in God? Yeah, yeah, as I said, people are believing in God. I think their fear of death does, is a driving, motivating factor as to why people end up believing in God. They just want it to be true, and people a lot of times just end up believing in exactly what they want to be true. Let's talk about this. Do you wish there to be a God? Do you want there to be a God? That's a good question. Um. Everyone should ask that question, because it's really a different question of as far as wh whether you believe in God. Do you want there to be a God? Are you a wanter of God? And if, if you don't want there to be a God, um, that's pretty weird. That's pretty weird. Why, why wouldn't you want there to be a God? That's a very good thing, you know, right? Assuming the God has some a basic level of morality and a decent set of rules, you know, then... Um, that's a that, that's just a very positive thing. So, wishing for there to be a god, wanting there to be a god, that just makes a lot of sense. And being, and if you if you wish there's a god, and you want there to be a god, then the logical conclusion from that is that you would be, you would hope that there is a god. You know, why wouldn't you be hopeful of something that that's a good thing? So you're looking at God. Okay, you're like, wow, this this would be a good thing if there's a god then it makes sense to have hope for it. Hoping there's a God because you think, well, there's some, at least there's some chance that there might be a God, and then you just, you hope for it. But, but you don't just hope for it, you live your life as though it might be true. Um, you're living your life as though it might be true, meaning that you're living your life as though this life might be a test, as though there might be a hypothetical God that might judge you and everything like that. And that just that's just logical. Okay, it makes logical sense to prepare for a scenario that there's a God because no one knows there isn't. So it comes back it comes back to the better safe than sorry attitude.
you know? Better safe than sorry. And so let's bring all this back to Hitch, okay? Um, Hitchens was a smoker. So maybe he could have benefited from more of this stuff in his life. Hitchens certainly could have benefited from more fear. He should have feared those cigarettes that he was smoking. Um, he should have even feared the possibility he might be judged by the hypothetical God for smoking, abusing his body and everything. So that's why it makes sense to, um, if you bring the possibility of a hypothetical God in your life, it should only improve things. It should only improve your life. It should only improve your actions. It should, it should just make you a better person. Because now you have this whole other reason to like uh, be extra good person. Because now you're thinking, well, you might be judged. So it's just more motivation to be a good person. Uh, more motivation to work on your self-improvement. Because if there is a God, no one would know how good you need to be in order to pass the test, in order to, you know, get rewarded or whatever. So, duh, just, it's a good thing. You know, um, I guess Hitchens could have, could have benefited from more nonsense. You know, if he thinks God is nonsense, really, it's being, um, you know, being open to God, if you think it's nonsense or whatever, it's just more of a childlike mindset. It's being open to all the possibilities. Why would you close your mind to that? Because you think, oh, it's a, it's, it's nonsense or whatever. Yeah. Uh, call it nonsense all you want. It's still possible. Servility. Yes. Um, maybe Hitchens should have been... It sounded, from the sound of it, it, it sounded like Hitchens didn't even want there to be a god. Personally, I think... I think it's a fair assumption to say Hitchens did not even want there to be a god because there being a god would have meant that Hitchens would have had to sacrifice his freedom and he didn't want to have he didn't want to be a serf he didn't want to live under a celestial North Korea that was kind of his whole point that's why he brought that point up so much so he he wanted he didn't want there to be a god and so he must have not wanted to live forever that badly because if you would, if you want to live forever naturally you would want there to be a god because in a god in a, in, a, in a universe where there is a God, it is easier to live forever, assuming you're just obeying the rules of this hypothetical God. So, um, yeah. And Hitchens could have benefited more from wish thinking as well. You know, because at least wish thinking would have led him to at least be hopeful that there were a God. And uh, that hope should have led him to improve himself more and not smoke and and more really strive for um strive for that lifestyle where you're trying to be practically perfect as far as your health and your because no one would know the rules of god meaning you might need to be practically perfect which would and so considering there being a, considering the possibility of god would would lead you to strive to be practically perfect and Hitchens could have benefited from more perfection in his life because being a smoker, and I think he was probably a drinker as well, um, that's not so good for you. So clearly whatever his motivation structure was, it wasn't enough to motivate him even to stop smoking. So maybe if he had considered the possibility of a God, that would have motivated him to stop smoking. Okay. All right, and as far as wish thinking goes, wish thinking isn't always a bad thing. A lot of people would look at me and say, oh, I'm a wish thinker for even thinking that living forever is possible. That is a wish that most people consider that just a very wishful thinking. And it is, but if it's not going to stop me from, from wishing and hoping that I can live forever and therefore trying. You see how wishing and hoping for something can lead you to try harder in your life. So wish thinking can actually be a strategy for self-improvement, okay? And, and wish thinking, if I recall, that's even one of the ingredients of the White Queen's potion, when she's making a potion, okay? Two teaspoons of wishful thinking? You can't imagine the things that go on in that place. Yes, I can. Wish thinking is sometimes a necessary ingredient to life. Because, you know, we got to be hopeful. Gotta be hopeful of eternal life. 
if you think it's wish thinking or not, we have to be hopeful that we can live forever because if we have no hope, if we have no wish thinking in our lives, then we're going to self-destruct because we'll have no motivation to, to strive. We'll have no motivation to live. You know, like sometimes wish thinking ends up being the truth. So it might have seemed wishful in the moment. You know, right now we might look at this eternal life thing as being very wishful. It doesn't mean we're not going to live forever in, 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 in applying this to God. Just because it seems like God is wish thinking doesn't mean it's not true. And it doesn't mean there isn't a God. Just because it seems very, um, you know, wishful. Sometimes the wishful thing ends up being the real thing. So uh, that's about it. Thank you, and may you live forever. A celestial North Korea. <laughs> Who wants this to be true?